This is the second of several maths casts in which I am looking at the Laplace transform of periodic functions. In this recording I am going to look at the rectified sine wave. Its functional form is that shown here, the absolute value of sine nt. Let's try and get a picture of what this function looks like first of all. I'm going to start by drawing just sine nt without the absolute value. I'll just draw it for positive t to the right of the vertical axis. Remember the period is just 2 pi divided by the coefficient of t, so 2 pi over n. We can therefore just draw a sine wave and mark on the period and here also one of the half periods, pi over n. The effect of the absolute value is to leave any positive values of the function exactly as they were before but where the function goes underneath the axis it now gets flipped up so that it's above again rectified in fact. Here's what it looks like. Such functions are sometimes useful in branches of electrical engineering for example. Notice one thing about this function its period has changed. The unit of repetition is now not 2 pi over n long but just pi over n that's because the part underneath is identical in shape to the part above, apart from being underneath. When we flip it up, it just repeats the part above, and so the period gets halved. Let's write that down. P equals pi over n. Now I'm going to take the Laplace transform of this shape. It's a periodic shape, so I need to use the formula for periodic functions. Let me remind you of that again. There it is. Do you remember we just integrate over one period instead of zero to infinity? The integrand is the same as usual, f of t times e to the minus st, but to take account of all the missing range of integration that we've removed, there's a factor of 1 over 1 minus e to the minus ps outside. Earlier on the period was called t, but here I happen to have called it p. It makes no difference. OK, so in our case the function is f of t and it's the absolute value of sine nt. But the period is just pi over n, so we can change p to pi over n. But then, as far as the function is concerned, starting at 0 and going up to pi over n, it's just sine of nt. It's this part here, which is all above the axis and just equal to the sine so we don't actually need to worry about the absolute value. Okay, so that's 1 over 1 minus e to the minus pi over n s integral 0 to pi over n sine n t e to the minus s t dt. The integral is actually a little bit nasty. You can do it by parts. You'd have to do it twice and then rearrange the expression you get. Alternatively, just look up the answer. I'm going to do that here now and write down the answer. We get overall a minus and an e to the minus st as a factor and then a 1 over n squared plus s squared and then a combination n cos nt plus s sin nt and that all has to be evaluated from 0 to pi over n. It's not quite as bad as it looks after we've substituted in the limits. That's minus e to the minus s pi over n over 1 minus e to the minus s pi over n 1 over n squared plus s squared and then substituting in t equals pi over n we get n cos pi plus s sine pi minus n cos 0 minus s sine 0 however sine of pi is 0 and sine of 0 is 0. 
and cos of 0 is 1 and cos of pi is negative 1. So that simplifies to minus e to the minus s pi over n n squared plus s squared times 1 minus e to the minus s pi over n and then minus n and minus n again which is minus 2n altogether. So that simplifies to 2n e to the minus s pi over n n squared plus s squared to 1 minus e to the minus s pi over n. I could leave it like this, or if I wanted I could multiply top and bottom by the same factor chosen to make the bottom a hyperbolic function. It works like this. Here's the factor. And so we end up with 2n. Now on top we've got e to the a half s pi over n times e to the minus s pi over n, so that's e to the minus s pi over 2n and on the bottom we've got n squared plus s squared and expanding the brackets e to the s pi over 2n minus e to the minus s pi over 2n and now with the 2 on top and the combination of exponentials underneath that's the same as n e to the minus s pi over 2n over n squared plus s squared times the hyperbolic sine, or shine, of s pi over 2n. And if you like, a shine underneath is a cosetch on top. So that's e to the minus s pi over 2n over n squared plus s squared cosetch of s pi over 2n. And that concludes the derivation.